Hey guys, welcome to your Daily Smash for Wednesday, October 9th, 2024. I'm Rick. I'm Kelly. We just came from the red carpet premiere for Line in the Sand, the new James O'Keefe film. They had a premiere party at the uh, Regal Theater in Newport Beach. Wow. It was a wow. Okay? Like, I've never seen a documentary like that. You have to... If you like the Menendez Brothers, or you like any of these shows... You have to watch this documentary. It was powerful. Unbelievable. Yeah. Like unbelievable. Like it was unbelievable what this journalist did. Yeah. It's eye opening. He right uh, here. Eye opening. He exposed a lot of stuff. And I I rail about the border every day on my Leventhal report on Newsmax too. I do. I, I talk about the border almost every day. Really upset about the open border situation. He exposed so much corruption. There is so much money. Tens of millions, hundreds of millions flowing to NGOs and private companies that are processing and moving these people around the country, housing them. So I have a girlfriend. I'm not going to name her name. But she told me, hey, you know how, you know how to get rich? She's rich. She's loaded. Yeah. And I go, How? Just, you get government funding. You get the federal government to give you contracts. Uh, a, a girlfriend of mine has yeah. Section 8 housing. Government has to pay those, right? Oh, yeah. I, I learned that early on. They said, you know, if you're a landlord and you have Section 8, yeah. you get paid every month. You get paid every month. No squatting. Government just pays you. There's federal government stuff that you can do to get mega, mega rich. Well... This guy exposed the corruption. The whole thing, you so, you will vote differently when you see this. Okay? James Robin Bigelow, you said, oh, this is, oh, w watch this documentary that is legit true. Because we have Robin Bigelow that always says, it's not fact. It's You have no idea what you're, what the hell you're talking about. Okay. okay? Robin Bigelow. So <laughs> she's here every day. She always says that we're saying fake news. Well, you don't even know what you're talking this about. This is definitely not fake news. And <laughs> and if you have any concerns about the border, if you're wondering what's going on down at the border, we recommend Line in the Sand. He's a Gonzo journalist. He took a crew. They went into Mexico. He had then, body cams. He had like secret cameras all over him. Cameras. But they also had other cameras, but they rode with the migrants up to the border, multiple locations, went across the border with migrants, watched how they were processed, talked to the Border Patrol, followed them to every location that the migrants went to, talked to the bus company that was busting the migrants, talked to, followed them to the airport, went to the shelter where they were being, and, and then exposed the people who were being paid to house them, move them, all that Fascinating. So we talked to him, and he's he's a fan of Kelly's, and uh, I think he's going to come on my Newsmax show. I can tell you right now, it was. I I cried because there's, these there's stuff these the kids, the kids, you guys don't understand what's happening with these kids. They are separated from their mom and dads. It is. You guys will. Um, they're being. They are being. They're being like, trafficked. They're being Hundreds trafficked. Hundreds of thousands of children. And you Any see little... them in there, and they're happy housing. And these, the government, our government, is allowing this to. Ha it they're, is. They're encouraging it. They're funding it. They're encouraging it. And 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 you see the border patrol, and it's all Kamala Harris. These you will die when you see this. These people know the traffickers, the cartel. They know they're making money. It's Everyone's corrupt, making money, and they won't say anything because everybody has to feed their families. They're, it's a trickle down effect. It is so corrupt and so horrible that these children. Oh, honey, honey, you want to take a minute? <laughs> yeah, can we just stop this for a second, please? Yeah. All right, I'm back. All right. I had it um, like white might. It was it's horrible. It is late, um, but it is a very powerful film. And it's I, not a film. It's a documentary. It's, and anyone it's who real sees life. It, anyone who sees it, if they have a heart and a soul, they're not going to want to vote for Kamala Harris. 
when they see what the Biden administration has been doing for the last three and a half years, it's criminal. Um, all right. Well, anyway. <laughs> but you feel so bad for these people. They just want a better life. Well, some of them do, but and some the of them way- are criminals. Some of them are criminals. They are. But the way they are sex trafficking these kids, yeah. our government is doing this. Yeah. Probably get shut off on YouTube right now. Okay, because that's what's happening. This is not misinformation. This is not misinformation. Watch Line in the Sand and you'll know what we're talking about. Anyway, um, in other news, we are interviewing Teresa Judice tomorrow. And I said this to our patrons on the Rick and Kelly Show on Patreon uh, to give us questions. If you guys have any questions, send them our way and we'll ask Teresa tomorrow. We'll show a clip or two here and then you can see the whole interview on the Rick and Kelly Show on Patreon. Um, We never finished the Hertz guy story. Oh yeah, go ahead. It took us three days. (laughs) Yeah. We've had a rough week. so Look what time it is, you guys. I'm in bed by this time. It's 11 o'clock at night. Like I'm exhausted. This documentary will take the living soul out of your body. Okay? You will see how corrupt everything is. You will, you will not vote for Kamala Harris. You will see exactly the corruption that is going on in America today. It's okay, real, let's talk about the Hertz guy. It's pathetic. I was going to say we can wait till tomorrow and keep people on, on, on edge for one more day. No, let's just talk so, about okay, it. Okay, so we're in the Hamptons, and Shoshana has a bunch of stuff. And I'm like, I'm going to rent you a car one way from... From, from West Hampton from down River, to, to New York. Yeah, from Riverhead. And there was one company that would do it, Hertz, and they had a, an office in a hotel in Riverhead. So we drive there. We made a couple stops along the way. We get there, and the guy goes, I'm closed. He's behind the counter in the no, lobby he's there. of the hotel. Yeah, no, he, no, we got there at 1240. Mm-hmm. Okay, we get there at 12. We had a lot of things to do. We went to Optimum, and it took forever to drop that shit off. We also we and also then, went to Salvation Army. Then we went to Salvation Army to, uh-huh. to, to, to drop off stuff. Donate some stuff. To, to donate stuff. And then we went over there. It was 1240. The guy was in there, and he was like, uh, we're closed. I'm like, what do you mean you're closed? We already have a thing. And usually with Hertz, you can have a number. We already paid for it. It was through Expedia. You get there. Like you I get, have a reservation. You got the keys. I need my just car. Just give it to us. We already paid through it. Through, through sorry, I already logged out. He goes, sorry. I'm like, well, logged can you log out, back you're in? You're late. I was like, I'll take care of you. I'm like, wait. What do you mean? You're, we paid for this already. You're here. He's like, sorry. He goes, I'll it. get fired. I'll get fired. I'm like, really? For helping a customer, they're going to fire you? And maybe in today's world, they would. But Yeah, in today's world, yeah. you, they probably would. Weren't we just talking about how nobody wants to work? Yeah. So I say, I say to the guy, I'll take care of you. I just, Rick goes, I'll pay you right now. I'll pay I'll, you $50 I'll, in cash I, to I log back in. Nope. That's probably more than he'll make in one hour. <laughs> like we would have paid him to give us our car that we already paid for. So he's like, I, I can't do it. Sorry, I can't. And I and I walked away, and then I went back. And I said, you know, you ruined our day. Because there's nowhere else to rent a car. He had the keys in his hand. Right here. He had and it he right has there. a computer. He, all he has to do is log back in. How long does that take? 20 seconds? And then he process, pushes a few buttons, and bam. Okay, here's your contract. You print it out. Oh, it's printed out at 1240, and, our, and they close at noon. But Really? Like, he's not going to get in trouble for that. I'm sorry. I don't believe it. And maybe you'll say, oh, he would have gotten in trouble. How would he get in trouble for something we already prepaid for? Just give us the keys. D- don't be lazy. D- unlog and help us out. Okay? And he just looks at me like, well, what time was your appointment? I go, 1030. I-, I was here late. So what? I didn't know they closed at noon. They're open from 9 to 12. They're not open from 9 to 1 or 9 to 2. The guy goes, Sorry. I'm not going to do it. Like, the way he said it was yeah. such a dick. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? This is what's going to happen to you. You're going to be at this job for the rest of your life. Yeah, he didn't like the, that. Your, this is the way you're being right now. This sets you up for the rest of life. You're going, this, 
This is what socialism is. Okay, my friends? Status quo, not going above and beyond. Right. Everybody living the same. Right. Not going up, not being a hard worker, mm -hmm. not going the extra mile, doing well, the best job that you can do. That is laziness. That is, I can't, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm out. I didn't, I'm, not getting, I'm not getting paid anymore. That's what happens with socialism. Well, you know what? It happened in the movie, too. There were a lot of people in that, in that movie, Line in the Sand, who were like, I'm just doing my job, just doing my job to make that money. They're getting paid to, yeah. to be part of this whole corruption. process. The, corrupt, the corruption that is going on right now in America is disgusting. Yeah. And it is only going to ruin our country. So the upshot was Shoshana didn't have a car to drive back to the city where she could easily move her stuff well, well, into Rick, her apartment. Rick, Rick gave her a toolbox <laughs> yeah. like this big. He put all the tools in for her. She had a painting. He gave her a painting that was worth like $6,000, a car painting. He gave her, we gave her a blanket. We gave her, I mean... Well, she's, whatever she wanted, she took. She, she filled gave a, a giant suitcase. Jade thing. She, we gave her like a big, huge things. Full so of she stuff. had to take the train, and the train wasn't running. So they had to put her on a bus to the next train station because I felt sorry. We were going for her. to JFK, the, you know, early the next morning. We couldn't, we couldn't take her. I felt so sorry for Shoshana. It was like, yeah, it was so sad. But thank you, Shosh, if you're watching, for your help. You, you were terrific. Really, oh, we really God. appreciate you being there. She was and helping great. Us out. Uh, real quick, hot topic. Hot topic. Someone said, Rick, you're in the Menendez Brothers documentary on Netflix. And we've been watching the other Menend monsters on Netflix. So this is different. It's a documentary. And we're wa so we wa started watching the documentary. I didn't know I was in it. Nobody told me. Nobody asked for my likeness or whatever. I oh, didn't yeah, sign what, anything. That's what I said to you. Yeah. And you got a lot of questions on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's why I was brought it oh, up. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So... I was actually falling asleep a little bit. It was a great, great documentary. But it was, well, we were tired. It was late. And 10 minutes left. Because I was trying to figure out, well, I don't remember covering the Menendez brothers. Like, I'm in New York. They're I in California. You. I was like, and then they started talking about OJ. I'm like, oh, I was there for OJ. Maybe they're going to show me covering OJ. No. 10 minutes left in the film. I pop up on the screen talking about how the Menendez brothers were reunited in prison after 21 years. Finally. And I don't remember doing that. I kind of vaguely remember doing the live shot, but when I was, I forgot about it until I saw it. I actually recorded it yeah. off the TV. The Beverly Hills brothers convicted of killing their parents have been reunited in a Southern California prison. This week, Eric Menendez moved into the same housing unit as his brother, Lyle. But it's crazy how many... How long ago was that? Do you remember? I, it says a date on it. I, I want to say it was like five or six years ago, maybe? Uh, or our three anniversary years? is coming up yeah. tomorrow. 10-10. 10 2020 10-10-2020. We've been married years. four years. Can you imagine? Kelly goes, you look better now than you did in that video. You know why? Because I made him get new teeth. Uh-huh. And get his, his eyes done. That's a game changer, my friends. Yeah. Get your, I got, I if got you the have bags. bags underneath your eyes or like lower yeah. hoods, yeah. you get those. I had upper and lower hoods. I haven't had that done yet. And they bothered me. They, they did? did? They bothered me. Yeah. With the bags or the, the lower? The bags. Yeah. Not bothered me like physically. I was, but just looking at them bothered me. Yeah. But well, she, it, that, that will take years off your life and i think you I, look better now than you did back then thank can you. we see it can we show it are we allowed oh yeah sure yeah yeah so Go someone ahead. said well how could you not know and i told kelly well when i signed the contracts at fox and i think this is true for every network they own your likeness for anything you do for yeah, them. Yeah, like, like I do for Bravo. They can yeah. show me forever. Yeah, and yeah. you don't get paid for that. No. And they don't have to tell you, oh, you're going to be in episode five of The Housewives yeah. this season. You were in like three, four, five episodes. You never know. You don't get a heads up. No. Well, it's the same thing. Nobody told me. I'm sure the producers of the film just did a Nexus, a Lexus Nexus search or whatever they do these days to find every reference to the Menendez brothers in media and then just cherry pick what they could find and what they could get rights to and put it in the film. And I would happen to be the guy telling that little story 
It was kind of cool. Do you remember that, though? You know, it's... I v Vaguely. I mean, obviously, I look at myself, I'm like, oh, yeah, this kind of sounds familiar, but... So, I was um, in eighth grade. I, I was... 89, I was in eighth grade. And I remember that Menendez Brothers. I remember that, right? And I was thinking, how in the hell could these spoiled brats kill their father? Like, like mom and dad. Like, what kind of monster, hence the name monsters, yes. would kill their their, fam their, their parents, right? Because I love my mom and dad. I, even though they make me mad, I still love them. I would never, I could imagine ever killing them. You know what that's called? Patricide. Okay. Don't know what that means, but thank you. <laughs> it means killing your parents. <laughs> and so I, I I remember thinking that, but then I have a friend. I, I have a friend. They're twins, and they told me that their dad did the same thing. This was six years ago, remember? If, and, if and they what? told you that. And I, I was flabbergasted that a dad or a family member could do this to their it's own awful. children. Awful. So so seeing this Menendez brothers reminds me of my two friends. Anyways, they told me this and I now watch this and they, this absolutely happened. This if, absolutely happened to these boys. If what they say is true, I said this to Kelly when we were watching that, if what the Menendez brothers say is true, they should be out of jail tomorrow. Yeah. They never should have gone to jail in the first place. I know they, they, sh they shouldn't have taken a shot. Of course they should have gone to in the first place. What they did was absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong, okay? They killed their mom. They killed somebody. They could have left. But they served enough that time. That dad left at 16 years old. They could have bounced too. I understand there is a there is a psyche of like being under someone's control. And they didn't have the wherewithal to do it. But they were spoiled little brats. Okay, what they did was wrong. Yeah. They served their time, though. Yeah, they have. They have. We all done things that are wrong. Fine, they life. should have done time, they, and they did. They've done plenty of time. Plenty of time. And what I said to Kelly was, if they were tried today with the same set of circumstances, they would manslaughter at worst. Three, five years are out. Well, I just, I just think that that the first jury was you know man versus woman like yes they said that the women were were compassionate yep. and they kind of understood yeah because a lot of women have been sexually abused but back then men never men, didn't talk about it. it was not a story it was never brought up and they didn't believe it could happen right and the second trial they weren't allowed to bring up any of that evidence and those so, parents screwed those boys up oh yeah for 100 percent sure. for sure um, all right, we're going to leave it there. Uh, thanks for watching. Oh, in the news. Oh, in the news. Are Milton. We're, we're, it's, it's 11. No, I know, Milton. I just want to say, Hurricane Milton, uh, today's Wednesday. It's supposed to hit Wednesday night. and We didn't put a uh, coolest thing in last night. But we it's there put... now. It, and, and we'll do it again. Uh, the GoFundMe page for Kula. We'll put and the Kula link in the description. And Kula did Newsmax, too, with you today. She did brilliant. She was terrific. Kula Salavaris is one of our patrons on the Rick and Kelly show, and she lost everything in Tarpon Springs. Uh, well, Kelly set up a GoFundMe page. Help, well, encourage her to set up a GoFundMe she page. Her daughter, I think, was her daughter. Is that who said We all have our kids do everything for us. When we get old <laughs> yeah. like this, we're not savvy enough. Like, I have Julie do everything. It's like this. It's like, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. Okay, well. Like, can you do now this? Now I'm like this. How do you do this? <laughs> Wait, how does this go? But but the point is, the folks in Florida are facing the biggest threat they found in Tampa. They faced in over 100 years. It's a monster storm, and Kula's restaurant is once again in the crosshairs. So you know, she's trying to raise some money. And Kelly, we contributed, and you know, if you want to give to one victim, you can. But thoughts and prayers to everybody down there. Good luck. I just think even if it's two dollars. It helps. It helps. It will help her. Yeah. She is going through some a, horrible things right now. And she's a wonderful person. So uh, uh, stay strong, Florida. It's going to be tough, uh, but you'll get through it because you always do. God bless you.